Hello Legends, I'm Laura from the training team here at Lexa, and today we're going to take some time to walk through track. We'll start by explaining what track is and why it's useful before diving into the hub and looking at a couple of interesting use cases. So let's get started. Firstly, what is track? Well, track allows you to measure the change of your profiles, attributes and segments over time. For example, you could track the population of your high lifetime value segment. Does it grow over time or decrease over time? Track gives you a really easy way to visualize this. Or you could track the average order value of your online shoppers. Again, you'll be able to see whether this increases or decreases over time. And because you're getting this information in real time, you'll be able to jump onto any trends straight away. But how does this all work? It's actually a really simple two-step process. First, you set up the metrics that you want to track, and then you create your dashboards and add your metrics to them. But I'm going to jump into the hub and demonstrate because I find it much easier to show this concept rather than tell. We're now in the hub and we're going to navigate to measure. This finds us on our track dashboards page. Just a quick note, access to track is controlled by your group permissions and relies on your team using Lex's CDXP. If you don't have access to track and would like to, simply ask your account admin or reach out to Lex's support. Along the left hand side of the screen, you'll see all of our saved dashboards. And we're in our demo hub, so we have a number of track dashboards already configured and ready to go. The first four, acquisition, growth, retention, and RFM are your out of the box dashboards that are set up by the Lexa team and ready for you to use when you first log into your hub. Before we create some new dashboards from scratch, let's take a closer look at the ones we already have set up and explain some key components. I'm going to select our acquisition dashboard and we can see that it's quite detailed. You can group metrics into cards, everything contained within the teal outline, and cards allow you to configure how metrics are visualized on your dashboard. Each card will have a display name. So this one here is for new customers last seven days. And then underneath this, you have the metrics that you're tracking. You can have one or more metrics to a card. It just depends on what you'd like to track. You can also customize how information is presented on each card. All you have to do is click the edit icon in the top right corner of the card and then select your presentation. So right now summary is selected, which is a numerical view, but I could choose a line graph or a bar graph. And if I click out of this and scroll down, the card for new customers by year acquired is presented as a bar graph, for example. Let's take a closer look at one of the cards we have configured though. If I look at the card for new customers last 30 days, we're tracking some really interesting metrics. The first is population for new customers last 30 days, which just means how many new customers we've acquired in the last 30 days. It looks like 458, and we can see from the arrow next to the figure that this is a downwards trend. Then we have uh, a metric for average order value for new customers last 30 days. The average order value is $114 and we can see that this is an upwards trend. Then we have a metric for average spend per product for new customers last 30 days and average items ordered for new customers last 30 days. And finally, average discount first order for new customers last 30 days. This card is really useful because we can see generally new customer numbers over the last 30 days are trending downwards, which isn't great obviously, but we can get onto this straight away and start investigating what's happening. The other out of the box dashboards are similarly detailed. So when you log into your hub, I would highly recommend coming into track and start taking a look. Let's move on to creating new dashboards though, because this is the fun part. 
As I said earlier in this module, it's a really simple two-step process. First, you have to set up your metrics, and then second, you have to create your dashboards where you can then drag and drop your metrics to track. Metrics are usually attached to a specific segment. But what do I mean by that? If I go back to our acquisition dashboard and look at the first card, the title of this card, New Customer Last 7 Days, is actually a saved segment we have in our segment builder, which means that all of the metrics on this card are tracked against this specific segment. Creating a metric is easy and I can do it in two different ways. First, I'll show you how to do it in our segment builder. So I'll click on understand in the top navigation bar to get to our segment builder. And our default view is all records, which is what we want. If I move to the right of the screen, I can search for specific attributes and start to set up my metrics. If you remember from our acquisition dashboard, one metric we were tracking was average order value for new customers last seven days. So I'll search for average order value and then I will open up this attribute and I'll click into the metrics tab. We can see that I already have some metrics set up, but for the purposes of this demo, we're going to ignore these and show you how to set up a metric for average order value for new customers last seven days. I click on the track another metric and the first thing I need to do is select the segment I want to track this metric against. So I select new customers last seven days. Then I scroll down and I have to select what I actually want to track. I can track the total population of the segment or I can track the value of an attribute over time. And I can select sum, count, average or cardinality. In this case, I want to track the average of the average order value attribute. So I select this. Then I have to fill in my details. The name should reflect what the metric is tracking. So in this case, average order value for new customers last seven days. And the category is acquisition. I can also give this metric a description and a color. Then all I do is hit save. We can then see that this metric is set up and ready to go. We can also do this in track itself. I go back to measure in the top navigation bar and then I'll click on the metrics tab. Here you'll see a list of all the metrics that have already been created. And to create a new one, I click on the track another metric button. And the process is exactly the same as it was in the segment builder. I select the segment and then the attribute. Fill in my details and hit save. One really important thing to understand about metrics is that when you create a new metric, it starts tracking from the day that you created the metric onwards. It doesn't include any historical data. So for example, if I created a new metric on the 1st of January, 2022, no data before this date will be captured. Once your metrics are configured, you're ready to create your new dashboards. Customer growth is really important for any business and using track to visualize the lifetime value of your current customer base is a really great way to see whether or not your customer lifetime value is increasing. So to kick this off, the first thing I need to do is go to the bottom of the track page and click on new dashboard and I'll fill in my details. The name I'm going to give this dashboard is growth lifetime value, current customer base. And then the category is growth. And I'll chuck in a quick description too. So grow the LTV of my current customer base. I am going to keep the color as is and select my groups and then hit save. Now that my dashboard is set up, I can start adding my metrics. The first metric I want to add is the metric for population of all customers. This metric simply tracks all our customers over time. I drag and drop onto our dashboard and then I'll edit so we can look at this in summary view. And I'll explain why I've added this metric in a moment. 
Secondly, I'm going to add a metric tracking the total number of our two order customers. Again, I search, find the metric and drag and drop onto our dashboard and I'm going to place it next to the population of all customers card. I'll need to edit to show this metric in summary view too. I'm doing this because I want to compare our total customer base against our two order customers. And what I can clearly see is that just under 20% of our customers have made two purchases. Our demo company here, Fitness Co, has a serious problem. We would obviously like this number to be a lot higher as more of our customers should be repeat purchases. This is now something for me and my team to investigate and come up with an action plan for. Maybe a new marketing campaign with the purpose of converting our one-time buyers into two-time buyers, for example. I'm now going to add a couple more metrics to these cards. To our all customers card, I am going to add um, average order value and then total spend as well. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing to my two order customers card. So I search and find these metrics again and drag and drop them onto the card. I can compare one against the other and having these two cards side by side on the dashboard shows me that while our repeat customer numbers are low, they have a higher lifetime value compared to the rest of our customer base. Therefore, our focus needs to be on encouraging more of our customers to become repeat purchasers. I can just feel a marketing brainstorming session coming on. Finally, I am going to add a metric tracking the population of my top 25%. And again, I'm going to edit this so that my metrics display in summary view. The news is a little better here for Fitness Co. As we can see, this population is increasing, which is exactly what we want to see. Now, the second dashboard we're going to build out is a little different. We're going to do some channel analysis. What this means is that we're going to build out a dashboard that looks into our retail only, online only and omni-channel customers. This is a useful way to visualize our customers purchasing behaviors and which channels are most popular. This might inform how we encourage our customers to buy our products. For example, if we know that customers who purchase products online have a higher lifetime value than customers who shop in-store only, we might send our in-store only customers a discount code to use online. So first, we have to create a new dashboard. The process is the same as what we did for the first dashboard we created. I click on the uh, new dashboard button at the bottom of the page and then I will fill in my details. I'm going to name this dashboard channel analysis and the category is going to be channel. For the description, I'm going to type in retail, online and omni-channel analysis and then just keep the color as is. I'm going to select my groups and then hit save. This dashboard is now ready for some metrics. Firstly, I'm going to add the metrics for my retail only customers. I want to track the population of this segment, the average total spend and our average total orders. So I add these metrics to the same card. And now I'm going to make a couple of quick edits. So I am going to name this card retail customers and change it to summary view and hit save. And now I can set up the card for my online only customers or my e-commerce customers. So let me add the same metrics for e-commerce first. So again, it's just a very quick drag and drop onto the dashboard. And I'm going to make the same edits to this card as well. So I want to change the name of the card to e-commerce customers and change it to summary view too. Hit save. And then finally, let's do the same for our omni-channel customers. So I'll add a metric for population. Let me just find it. There we go. 
and average total spend. And finally, average total orders. And you know the drill, we need to make the same small edits to this card. I'll change the name to Omnichannel Customers and set the view to Summary and then hit Save. And now our dashboard is set up and we can start to do some analysis. Firstly, it's pretty obvious that our most popular channel is online with retail second and then our Omnichannel Customers in third. But while our Omnichannel Customers are our smallest group, they have the highest lifetime value so we want to find a way to encourage more of our customers to shop both in-store and online. And if ever this trend changes, we'll know because we'll have our dashboards right here and they're being updated regularly. And now that we have a couple of dashboards under our belts, I think we'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed learning all about track. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.